Yellow, and welcome back to the Manic Inquisition. This week, we have a doozy of a show for you. And in fact, it's a dynamic duo doozy. As our quizzers today make up the two halves of the sonic rainbow that very much is the band Unkind Skies. So with all that being said, and with all the ado that's fit to print, let's meet this week's atmospherically malevolent quizzards. Quizzard One, please introduce yourself. Hey there, my name is uh, Reese Bennett. Uh, I'm already kind of forgotten what some of the questions were, but something involved drinking. So I'm drinking a Keith uh, because at this point it should just be my blood and it's out of a bottle. Nice. I probably should have something more extravagant, but you know, way she goes. Hey, hey. Born in Nova Scotia, living in Cambridge, Ontario. So yeah. And third best thing about me. Oh, I, I can barely count that high. Um, I don't know, probably sense of humor, I guess. Probably third. There you go. I would definitely agree with that. All right. Quizzer two, please introduce yourself. My name is Mike DeRay. I live in Hamilton. I am currently finishing off some cider that I've never had before out of the can before I start drinking something else out of my favorite little drinking glass, which is handled down the hatch, bitches. I don't know if you can see that, but (laughs) yeah, a lot of drinks out of that one. And my... The third best thing about me is being able to come up with itemized lists uh, of things that are good about me. <laughs> nice. I like it. Very bad. You meta. guys are missing the first two. They're doozies, but we won't go there because that's not the question. <laughs> no, no. Please do Can not tell say- me the first two. Can I also say that I've never known how to pronounce Mike's last name, so I've just been waiting for this entire time since we've known <laughs> This is a learning experience. To finally then. say it. I love it. That's awesome. I wonder how you refer to me to other people in conversation be like oh mike's coming oh which one you know mike th- you know <laughs> my better <laughs> you know half. Which one I'm talking about. <laughs> my He's better half guy. i like it yeah. all right so this is our unkind skies edition of the manic inquisition uh so i'm just going to ask you a few questions get to know you guys as pretentiously as you possibly can please describe your sound what is Ooh. what is how would you describe your unkind skies sound our sound is what you would hear if you were broadcasting 102.1 The Edge somewhere across 107.1 and they somehow got mixed up in a kite that was flying and almost touching the clouds, but then got hit by electricity, thus killing the kite bearer. (laughs) That's my summary. (laughs) Reese, do you agree? Ultimately, I do agree. However, I do think I have something that might be slightly more pretentious. Okay. I believe that our sound is something that you would probably hear in a movie of someone that's going to the New York library, but doesn't know how to read. (laughs) I I concur. Good, 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 good. Um, Where's your next gig? So the next confirmed one is uh, June 4th at Mary Stock, and there's going to be uh, a couple of bands that are playing the entire time. Uh, we're we're the second last one. We're like pre closer. If if you did want to come to the show, then you got to ask one of us, or or we'll get you the Facebook link, or you know that all yeah. kind of stuff. What's the weirdest instrument you've ever played? Oh, that's a good question. The weirdest instrument I played is a theremin. Nice. Damn it, that was gonna be mine. I've, there was one. <laughs> there was one on display in in a music store, and I saw it, and I immediately knew what it was because it looked like a piece of math equipment, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> I've got to try this out." And I just, it, you feel it's like it's like a cross between like a musician and a Jedi. You're just like waving your hands <laughs> around with the theremin mind trick, and you're getting these weird, eerie sounds nice. out of it. You're like, "Whoa, this is great!" Put me in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Put me in a swamp. The call of every good musician. <laughs> I think probably the weirdest one that I've ever played was like the, the little, uh, what's that little box that Mike's got one? Oh, of like the I know box? what you're talking about. You use like a little pen with it, right? Oh. It's like the tiny little synthesizer thing and it doesn't actually yeah. have keys, but it's in the shape of keys. Yeah. And it's like a little pen looking thing. Yeah. And it makes really like weird noises. I can't remember what that's called or... now. Well, I played one of those. It was weird as hell. We're going to find that. Nice. Okay. I think my favorite song of yours lyrically is the encore in which you sing about the encore that nobody asked for. So I was wondering, um, is that specifically about Louis CK or is that just supposed to be implied? 
<laughs> Bam. Oh, you know what? Somebody finally caught the message of that. Oh, somebody <laughs> finally caught the burn. You know, I thought where, you know, that line in the verse where it's like, oh, redheaded comic, get off the stage. I feel like more people would have picked up on that. <laughs> but man, it's just gone unnoticed for years now. Oh, whatever. Or do you want to give me any of the inside scoop of that song or are you going to keep it to yourself? Um, it's It's more or less just like when you kind of double back on something that you knew was a mistake in the first place right. you're not quite you're not quite out of the woods mentally on something so to speak it's like okay well i've been burned once it's, it's basically a big play on fool me once mm -hmm. uh but it, it's where where the shame is on you and you're also a fool wow. <laughs> got, it's a well, very got, good got, song got, and i appreciate it yeah. very much well that's good so thank I'm you for the song here. You're welcome. I'm glad that Mike's given stories because he just sings them. I think they're beautiful. I never ask what he's singing about. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Um, your most recent EP, HD Memories, seems to have gotten a bit more expansive and adventurous, incorporating flavors from different genres. Like I was getting some 80s glam rock, some 90s R&B vibes, some like pop punk. Was that blending of styles intentional or do you just follow where your feet lead you? Good job. Uh, it was a bit good of reference. it was a bit of both. Yes, <laughs> that was a very good reference. Thank you. Um, yeah, I actually remember messaging Reese, uh, saying, "Hey, are we are we tied to any kind of genre here? Because I'm just writing stuff. I was yeah. like, do we want to keep this cohesive? And he was like, "Buddy, just do what you're gonna do." Uh, ran a few things by him. He ran a few things by me. He was like, "Hey, this could probably fit. I've got this idea." And I was like, "Okay, uh, we're clearly not limiting ourselves here. We have no bumpers on this alley." So we're just going for it. Well, that's awesome. I, I really enjoyed that one. And uh, I'm looking forward to what you guys are doing next. I'm glad. I'm glad you're grooving to our stuff. Yeah, me too. I'm glad you have stuff to groove to. Okay. <laughs> um, that's all the interview questions I had. So let's just briefly go over the rules. First, I'll ask the questions and you'll get the points. There is no cheating. If you're going to look something up, look it up in your brain. Nowhere else. Uh, you will get part marks for incorrect answers that are funny or interesting or flattering. Um, if they're flattering to each other, I probably won't give you a point. If it's flattering to me, I'll definitely give you a point. Um, for each question, after the question starts, you can make your buzzer sound. So this is where we have to just... <laughs> Thank you, Reese. So Reese <laughs> has a synthesizer in front of him, and he is synthesizing the sound of a car. I like to think that he just buzzed that in to give you his buzzer noise. Like, that's not actually it. He's like, eh, okay, I'd like to give you my buzzer noise now. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, is that you? All that's right. It. So, Reese, right so when you hear that noise, that is Reese. <clears throat> Michael, what is your buzzer sound? Well, I didn't, have, I didn't have time to get my synthesizer thing set up with the audio output here, so I'm just going to stick with quack. Quack. All right. <laughs> quack so when we is. hear the quack, that is Michael the duck. All right. <laughs> So the first to buzz in gets an appropriate amount of time, roughly seven seconds to answer the question. If you can't answer the question in that amount of time, I will time you out. And I'm just going to jump in for a second and say, I knew tonight was going to be fun because I really like trivia and I really like you, Patrick. Oh, too bad the game hasn't started yet. Otherwise, Damn you it. Gotten oh, I was so close to getting an early lead. All right, fine. Well, because you didn't say quack. <laughs> okay, so the winner will be the person with the most points at the end, and the prize is going to be Glory, by which, of course, I mean a VHS copy of the 1989 classic Glory. Oh, my God, there's actually stakes now. In its original packaging. It's in the wrapper. Oh, yeah. my God. So if that you have a VCR, glorious, huh? you huh? can watch this about 100 <laughs> times before it gets worn out. And finally, the last rule is have fun, but that's really more of a suggestion. All right. Is everybody ready? You excited? Oh, hell excited. yes. Let us do it. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Our first round, we're starting off with an easy one here. We're starting off with people not named Ralph. All right. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. Here we go. Thank you. Question one. What Renaissance painter was the inspiration for a psi-wielding mutant amphibian? Quack. Reese got there first. Leonardo da Vinci. I am sorry. Leonardo did not. Leonardo was not the inspiration for a psi wielding mutant amphibian. Gosh darn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Michael. Raphael. Raphael, who is not a Ralph. 
Oh, okay. okay. I see. Okay, now I pick yeah, up. That's not your Ralph. Friend. Not Raphael. Can you imagine if you have a name as nice as Raphael? And somebody's like, "Hey, Ralph, what's going on?" Hey, Ralph. Ralphie boy. <laughs> what are you up to, you All old right. psi-wielding mutant amphibian? <laughs> Question number two: In the Sound of Music, who was seventeen going on eighteen? Oh, uh, Quack. Yes, Michael. Rolf. Rolf is correct. Rolf was <laughs> not Ralph. going on eighteen. <laughs> it is not Ralph. Didn't well, he turn out to be like a Nazi supporter? He he. Not only was he a Nazi supporter, he was a Nazi. All right. <laughs> Question number three: When it comes to leading Christmas, who is the reigning champion? Quack. Yes, Michael. Rudolph. Rudolph. Yes. Oh, not Rolf. Not Ralph. Damn. Okay, we're just going down a down a path here. Question number four. Armenian-Canadian folk singer who has been a children's entertainer for over 40 years. Quack. Michael. Raffi. Raffi is correct. Yeah. All right. Question number five. Who played the sitar for the Beatles? Oh, man. I actually... Oof. If neither of you know it, I'm going to have to time you guys out. I'm, no I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to... Uh, let's... Uh, Dolph Lundgren. Dol oh, it's not Dolph Ralph. Ungren? Famously not a Ralph, Dolph. but it is incorrect. I am sorry. I like it. The answer oh, is. You laugh though. You laugh though. I want my part to point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a point. You're good. Okay. Um, What's the answer? Sorry. So the answer was Ravi Shankar. Oh, Ravi. Ravi Shankar. All right. Okay. Question number six of non Ralphs Who is this Muppet who is not a person? Mm. Reese. I know it's wrong, but Alf. <laughs> Alf. I'm sorry, it's not Alf. Not it, Ralph. Uh, it's, you know what? It, um, it's a near rhyme of Alf. A quack. Yes, Michael. Oh, damn it. Okay. I was going to say, is it Rolf again? Because I swear I've it seen is it Rolf dog. again. Is it Rolf again? Except spelled R O W L F. And it's oh, Rolf the dog. Rolf? 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 That's, just, Rolf. that's just awkward. I think it's like Rolf. Like a, like a dog. Pretty clever, right, those so Michael gets people. a point right. for that. All right. And our next question in people not named Ralph. Who is this person who is not a Muppet? Quack. Yes, Michael. Um, Jimmy Smith. It is Jimmy Smith. It's not is a correct. Ralph at all. It's not even remotely no. a Ralph. <laughs> Curveball. All right. Now, question number eight. James Rolfe remains the longest serving mayor of what golden city? <laughs> Quack. That oh, would be Reese. Uh, Reese. San Francisco? San Francisco is correct. Ah, oh, damn it. I was going to say El Dorado. <laughs> it is not El Dorado. <laughs> that, is, that, that is too white a name. Well, you know what? Colonization did happen. You know, I, I, I see Michael's reasoning. I'm here. I'm here for it. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I see what you're going for. Well, I wasn't going I like for anything colonization-wise. I just thought Golden City. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Question number nine. What 2001 Grand Prix winner is the brother of seven-time Formula One champion Michael Schumacher? What Quack? 2001? Yes, Michael. Is it also Rolf? It is also Rolf. <laughs> Dude, I was going to say that. Do you want to take I, a guess what his last name is? I'm willing to bet it's not the dog. <laughs> that is correct. It is, it, it's, it's it is Schumacher. Schumacher. And our final question of the round. Who presents Lion Cubs to Elton John songs? I, f I feel like I, I got the wrong like me mental image uh, of this. I, I, thought, I, I thought of like Elton John accepting an award, but somebody was handing him a Lion Cub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rafiki. Rafiki. Oh. Reese gets it. Lion Very King. good. <laughs> yes. I'll give you a half point for naming the movie. Love it. Oh, sweet. So... After round one, we have some scores. In second place, with three and a half points, we have Reese. And in first place is Michael, with seven points. Not right. Very good, you guys. We're moving Solid. right along here. All right. Our second round today is Unkind Skies. It has almost nothing to do with the band. So the questions will relate to either things that are kind, unkind, or sky-related. Love it. Nimbus. <laughs> that might be one of the answers. So spoiler alert. I'm going to hold that half point for you. Because Nimbus should have been one of the answers. <laughs> All right. Question number one. 
of Unkind Skies. What popular brand of confectionaries that encapsulates non-nutritive objects have been banned from being sold in the U.S. since 1997? Quack? Yes, Michael. Rolf? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an We'll answer. give you a point for I'm Rolf. Just... Okay. That is incorrect, <laughs> but it's funny. Yes, Reese. What is the Kinder Eggs? Kinder Surprise Eggs is Kinder what it is. And you eggs. don't need to answer in Any the answer form of Jeopardy question. Any answer Jeopardy style. I love it. <laughs> question number two. Who is this? Quack. Yes, Michael. That is a Jewish actor. <laughs> <laughs> I am fairly certain he is Jewish. but uh, I, I, I can't remember his name right now, but he plays, he plays the dad in, in Big Mouth. I, I know he, he? He, like, he, he, eats, he, eats, he eats scallops in a dumpster. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, he was also he also does bits on John Oliver for for people yes. that uh, yes he yeah. does yeah I know who he is uh, and what do you say to this I don't know <laughs> um, I would give both of you a, uh, let's just give both of you a point for listing things why did you in. put my peach pits you know I like to suck out the flesh <laughs> <laughs> he's been That's in many disgusting. things over the years I first yeah. knew him from uh, the sitcom Mad About You where he was by far the best oh. character. His name is Richard Kind. Richard oh, Kind. that's the guy. Look at that. It works into the theme. Are we sure it? sure it wasn't Ralph Kind? <laughs> <laughs> it is not Ralph Kind. I'm sorry. But question number three. In the original season of Paw Patrol, who was Ryder's only female pup? <laughs> oh, Sky. Very good. Nailed it. Look at that. You know, because she, she's dressed in pink and gender roles and yeah. all that. That's the thing. Is that There's one female. Of course, she wears pink. I had this joke. It's not very good, but I like it. It's a, it. Why does Ryder only have one female pup? Because he's a. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. What TV character is married to Skylar White? Reese? Jack White. Ooh, it's not Jack White. I'm sorry, but that would be fun. Uh, yeah, Michael, do you know it? I don't. Oh, that's too bad. The answer was Walter White from Breaking oh, that Bad. that makes sense. Oh. All right. Question number five. What is the Beaufort scale used for? Beaufort, Beaufort, Beaufort scale? Beaufort. Beaufort. Uh, quack. Oh, Reese? Okay, got it. Um, isn't it like the precipitation or the humidity? In- oh, I'm sorry. It is neither precipitation nor humidity. Quack. I should know this. It's two French words. Yes, Michael. I'm going to say it's the scale for kindness. Aw, scale for kindness. I don't, know how you'd, I don't know how you'd measure that, but that's the theme. No. So I'm just, I'm just Reese was much here. closer. Damn it. It is actually wind speed. It is wind speed. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's, oh, I probably should have figured that out. Strong, strong wind. You know, it's interesting. Not, it's a scale that uses that. no numbers. It's just based on... So like, it's, it's just like, oh, it's fast. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it is based on like how much the wind moves water and what kind of water conditions it is. All right. Question number six. What kind of sky is the unkindest? Was that a, I heard a buzz, buzz in? I, it was a very hesitant it buzz. It was, yes. it was a tiny buzz. Uh, I'm going to go with um, thunderstorms. Okay. Thunderstorms. You think that's the unkindest? Michael, what do you think the unkindest is? Quack. I don't want to break the rules. I'm not just going to answer it. This isn't <laughs> chaos. Uh, the unkindest sky. I'm going to say, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, they're called mammo, mammo something clouds, and they're clouds that look like butts. <laughs> um, I can't remember. It's m- mammatus? Mammatus clouds? Are, are you thinking of like uh, mammary uh, glands? No, well, that's where it comes from. And, and they look oh, like, like... So they look very pillowy. And they, they, they do, but I imagine like just the smell... I, I think I for this one, the answer. Give... I feel like this is subjective. Just, I am oh. now wishing that I had come up with a funny answer for this, but I did not. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you actually had like a factual, non-debatable no. answer for the unkindest <laughs> that, sky. I was really that's a different show. Or something, but okay, <laughs> <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> All right, that one was a wash. All right, question okay. number seven. What kind of weather phenomenon is commonly depicted in various media as an efficient bovine conveyance? Reese. Tornadoes and twisters. 
Tornadoes and twisters. You got it. Oh, bovine conveyance. That's good. That's a good phrase. Thank you. I enjoyed writing it. Oh, man. Question number eight. Is undies kink an anagram of unkind skies? Quack. Yes. Michael. Yes, it is because that was the first name. <laughs> that was the original name. I'm going to give you a half a point because it's technically not an anagram of unkind skies. It's missing an S. It would have to be undies kinks, but that doesn't sound as fun. Or undie skinks. Undie skink. That's what I was thinking too. Or indie Alrighty. skunk. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's good too. Indie skunks. That might... Indie skunks. It would have to be skunks. That's got to be a blog okay. page somewhere. <laughs> All right. Michael, for um, indie skunks, I'm upping your half point to a point. Oh, cha-ching. Thank you, indie skunks. All righty. Moving on to question nine. If I started my own Unkind Skies oppo band called Benevolent Soils, and we simultaneously played a gig at the same venue, would we cancel each other out in a sonically epic rapture that ultimately annihilates the planet Earth? Quack. Yes, Michael. A little bit. Yes, mm. that is correct. <laughs> I was going to say a little, a little bit. There'd Reese, be some, there'd Reese, be what's some your tectonic answer? Tectonic shifting. I was going. I was going to um, say you're missing a. Uh, you're missing a third band in the middle, something on fire. Then we've got Earth, Wind, and Fire. <gasps> oh, I like look it. Look at what we've done here. And then we Reese just get like a point. And that would like be an 18 annihilate. person funk band. <laughs> Ooh. That, that would be annihilating plenty. That also like shifts tectonic plates and all that. So we have a little bit of everything. Very good. Our last question of Unkind Skies. Question number 10 Name any layer of the Earth's atmosphere that is not the stratosphere. Quack. Yes, Michael. The one that has the mammatus clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Butt clouds. Butt clouds. Sure. I'm going to write a paper and make sure that I name a new layer called the butt cloud layer. Can you please uh, just credit me somewhere in it? Yeah. It doesn't You'll have to be, be in the, the beginning. It can be, it can be, okay. Can I, can I also say the ozone layer? Ooh. That's, good. that's a good layer. I will give it. That's not what I was going for, but yeah. I'll, yeah. And you get a point. Technically a layer. Technically a layer. Wait, Quack, this is more of a question. Is the cosmosphere a thing? I don't think it is. The cosmosphere it sounds like it is could not. Be. The cosmos yeah. would be part of the exosphere, which is everything ah, outside, outside of the of atmosphere. Okay. Okay. You have got the surface layer, which is technically part of the troposphere. And above the troposphere is the stratosphere. Above the stratosphere is the mesosphere. Above that's the thermosphere, which is within the ionosphere. And then everything beyond that's the exosphere. I like, I like learning facts like that that I'm interested in, but won't remember in eight to 10 minutes. <laughs> give it two <laughs> all right so let's see where we're at score wise and things have shaped up nicely here mm. in second place we still have reese with 10 points solid but with only a one point lead is michael with 11 Ooh. points so we have oh, a race I'm we have a feeling like breathing down my race. neck which usually yeah. i'm into but <laughs> this is trivia damn it the wild west Moving on to round three, which this time is going to be all about targeted ads. Ooh. So what's going to happen in targeted ads is I asked famous painters to send me their most frequently seen ads targeted specifically for them. So I will show you the targeted ad and you have to tell me the name of the artist. So I'll just show you a picture. You just tell me the painter. Let's just jump into it. Our first targeted ad to a painter is this one here for Shears. Voted world's best ear shears seven years in a van row. <laughs> I believe Reese got there first. I think he did. I think he did. Okay, I'm going to say it two ways because there's some pretentious people. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh mm -hmm. or Vincent van Gogh. Oh, van Gogh. Ooh, that was surprisingly accurate, that second one there. <clears throat> You know what? I don't well, actually, like that not one as much. Not because that's not because that's the way that I I don't say it. It's because it makes the ad not work. Because then it would have to be mm. seven years in a Van Roch, and that just doesn't <laughs> sound as good. That's very true. All right, so Reese got the point in that one. Very good. Now we're even, Michael. Yeah, oh, it's all man, tied it's up. This is anybody's game. All right, <laughs> fingers on buzzers for our second targeted ad. It is time to get a watch. Reese. Uh, uh, Dolly. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Salvador Dolly. Oh, I I'm thought he was I'm, saying Dolly nice. Parton. No, I'm glad you said <laughs> Dolly because I forgot his first name was Salvador. <laughs> That's right. Dolly is fine. Dolly okay. Parton, I also probably would have accepted. Damn it. <laughs> All right. How about this one? Quack. Now you too can taketh away what the Lord giveth. 
with erasers. <laughs> yes, Michael. <laughs> Uh, the person that did a horrible touch-up job of that one thing of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you the point for that. That's all you really need to know. I've got it all written down here. In 2012, Cecilia Gimenez? Gimenez. Cecilia Gimenez. Oh, wait, is her last name she... with a Z? Yes. Jimenez. Jimenez. Ah, very nice. All right, I'm going to give you half a point for what I assume is the correct pronunciation. <laughs> all righty. All right, our next targeted ad. Quack. Yes, Michael. That one is Georgia O'Keefe. That is Georgia O'Keefe. It's all good. You know how I can tell? Yeah. You know how, how I can, can you tell? tell? I mean, there's Georgias there, but mostly because it's vaginas. Wait a minute. Oh, I thought they were flowers. Oh, is that what oh. she was going for? No, oh, now now the pun yeah. makes sense. Custom hood ornaments. I see. I was so right. confused as a teenager because all I had was art exhibits. Gave <laughs> <laughs> me a lot of grief. <laughs> okay. Yes, Georgia O'Keefe. So moving on to our next targeted ad. Pamjayas. Real comfort at surreal prices. <laughs> Reese. Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso, you got it. Quack, sorry, I just want to weigh in. I know the answer was already Picasso, but whoever did this is an artist in their own right. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. That was very flattering. I will give you a point. Oh, Pam Giants. Our next targeted ad is from this artist. Ellie brings the tricks and I bring the treats. Trained with love by Painter's Obedience School. <laughs> yes, Reese. Peanut, the elephant from African Lion Safari. <laughs> I like your answer, so I'm giving you a point. I honestly don't know who the art. It, it's just an elephant. <laughs> oh, it's an elephant. It's just it's just an elephant. I I didn't care. I was gonna like You're look it up the and elephant be like painted an elephant. The the elephant painted an elephant. Apparently, elephants Damn. can be trained to paint. Oh, that's amazing. And the best thing we taught them to paint was an elephant. It was an <laughs> elephant? Stupid. Self referential. <laughs> what the hell? Fingers on buzzers, we're getting ready for our next targeted ad at a painter, and it looks a little something like this. Ad for Action Jackson Stain Black. Remover. Yes, Michael. Okay. Part of me wanted to say Edward Van Halen, but that's not it. It, it is Jackson not. Pollock. It is Jackson Pollock. You got it. All right. Our next ad is somewhat similar, but for a different artist. Who was this targeted ad? Before and after. <laughs> Miracle Grow moisture control painting mix, specially formulated for the non lily livered lily lover. Quack. Yes, Michael. Okay, so we had an elephant painter. Was this one done by a frog? <laughs> <laughs> it was not done by a frog, which, but I'll give you which, a point. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yes, Reese. Lily Allen. <laughs> it's not Lily Allen. I'll give you half a point oh. for Lily Allen. The answer is Claude <laughs> Monet. Oh. And those are flowers, right? Not deviled eggs. <laughs> those are flowers. So our second last of targeted ads. Find hot single Vitruvian men in your area. <laughs> I heard Reese. Yes, Reese. Now it's Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> now it is Leonardo da Vinci. You got it. You heard Reese through you, Raphael. Because you lost me at the kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and our final painter of the evening is targeted with this ad. This is an ad for Black flower Black pots. Black. Yes, Reese. Frida Kahlo. Yep. Frida Kahlo is correct. Very good. So that was the round. Very good, everybody. We've got some scores that we need to go over now. And would you look at this? Oh, In second I think place happened. For the very first time is oh. Michael with oh. 16 and a half points. And the head of Michael by okay. half a point is Reese. 0.5. With 17 right. Don't points. call it a comeback when you're never out of it. <laughs> Moving on to round four. Oh, no. This is going to be uh -oh. a little unfortunate. But uh -oh. I made this round before it happened. I think he would like it. Let's roll with so it. So I think I'm going to keep it oh, in. Oh, is it Gilbert Godfrey related? It's Gilbert Godfrey. Well, oh. I just used his picture. So this round is called... Hello, ladies. Hello, I ladies. I like it. <laughs> nice. I'm sure he would be perfectly fine with this. All right. So every single answer to every single question will be a near rhyme of ladies. 
And so you have to answer Adela, hello, ladies, whatever it is. Okay. Hello, That's babies. <laughs> Very good. So question number one in hello, ladies. Hello, okay. small people who are here to replace us. Quack. Yes, Michael. Hello, babies. <laughs> that is correct. It is hello, Baby, I'm more upset I didn't get that one, even though I already made that joke. You you spoil you spoiler alerted for me, so yeah, I feel I deserve credit. half a point for being clairvoyant. Partial credit from me. I'll give you. <laughs> I will give you half a point for being counts. clairvoyant. Yes. All righty. Question number two. Hello. Type of North American tits. Also a kids magazine from the nineties. Quack, Michael. And I like that my thing is quack because I want to say. Hello, chickadees. Hello, chickadees is correct. Gosh, darn. Question number three. Hello, disease that in 2003, a Wisconsin teenager was the first person to have survived without getting preventative treatment before the onset gonna come of up. symptoms. Hello, Reese. scabies. Oh, I'm sorry. It is not scabies. Quack? Yes, Michael. Hello, rabies. It is rabies. Very Gosh, good. Darn. Rabies has a mortality rate of 100%, minus one person. It's, it's terrifying. <laughs> when minus you, one. Can you imagine just being that one person? Yeah. I, if, I imagine if hanging you get out with them would get super boring after a while. Because they <laughs> talk about it every time. You'd be like, oh my God, we get it. You're the one person. We get it, Cheryl. <laughs> All right. Question number four. Hello, personal hygiene products. Well, I don't use them, keep... so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that you keep in the bathroom? You know, those things. Reese. Hello, shavies. Shavies. Oh, I like that. I like it's it. It's not shavies, but I'll give you half oh, a point. Oh, it's not shavies. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go to the drugstore. I got to pick up some shavies. Got to pick up my shavies. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. What we were going for was toiletries. Hello, toiletries. Oh, okay. All right, question number five. Hello, cures you can find in your own kitchen. Reese. Hello, home remedies. That is correct. Very good. <laughs> Question number six. Hello, things like eye sockets or ear canals or tooth Black. holes. Yes, Gosh. we got Michael there. Hello, cavities. Hello. Something else I always say in the morning. I was going to say hello, orifices. Oh. Hello, orifices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that deserves a point for sure. <laughs> oh my God, your scores are going to add up to like a million. All right. Here we go. Question number seven. Hello. Spray that I think will make my shoes smell okay, but most Quack. definitely will not. Yes, Michael. Hello, Axe. <laughs> <laughs> it is not Axe, Reese. Hello, Febreze. Febreze. Hello, Febreze. <laughs> that is correct. Question number eight. Hello, place where bad people go when they die in Greece. Yes, Reese. Oh, he's got a higher pitch buzzer now. <laughs> Hello, Hades. Hello, Hades. <laughs> and for Michael's oh, case, tie in. <laughs> Question number nine. Fingers on buzzers. Question number nine. Hello. Phrase with a number in it that loosely means all of the waters on Earth. Reese? Hello, infinities. Ooh, I'm sorry. We're not going for infinities. Quack. Michael, do you yes, Michael? Hello, Poseidon. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It is Damn not it. the number Poseidon. No more mythology. <laughs> it was hello, seven seas. Okay. Oh. All right. See, now we're getting into double words. This last one's going to be go. a banger. <laughs> it is going to be a banger. <laughs> it is, hello, contagious skin infection due to mites causing itchiness and a Quack. rash. Yes, Michael. Hello, leprosy. <laughs> it is not leprosy. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a disease where skin falls off. I'll give you... Yes, Reese. Hello, scabies. Hello, scabies. Yes, bringing it back to scabies. Well, that's the end of that round. And like all good things, we're ending with scabies. <laughs> so all that's left to do in round four is check the scores. What do we got here? Oh, my goodness. In second place with 20 and a half points is Michael. 
And Reese is now taking the lead solidly and has 23 and a half points. Well, don't say solidly. Now you're just making me solid, feel bad. Solid three points. Is yeah, in, okay. In the sense that it's not a half point. Oh, okay. It's a solid 23. Okay. It's a solid I you meant, three man, point. Mike is just out of here. Screw that guy. Yeah, no, I did mean that, really. <laughs> <laughs> you were lapping up what I was throwing up. Oh, that's gross. Oh, okay. I've only done that once. Why do you got to? <laughs> <sighs> All right. Our next round is called Go Shorty. It's your birthday. And so the emphasis here is on short. Oh, so everything... I thought the emphasis was going to be on 50 cent. <laughs> so if you're ready, let's go on to question one of Go Shorty. Already. It's your birthday. Is one of the okay. questions who wears short shorts? Please. Because <laughs> I know the be... answer. That is a very good question. <laughs> I should have done that. We can redo it. We... All right. We're redoing it. I'm, I'm nixing this question. Qu- question it. number one. <laughs> <laughs> Who wears short shorts? Quack. <laughs> yes, Michael. The answer is we. Just we. <laughs> we wear short shorts. Yeah, you get the point. Oh. All right, very good. I'm glad we got question one out of the way there. Question <laughs> number two. In January 2021, what company did Wall Street try to sell Quack. short only to be thwarted by Redditors? Michael. GameStop. GameStop is correct. Question number three. Nominees for what award honoring works in digital and social media have included Aquafina, Bubbly Super Bowl ads, at Diplo, and Dwayne Johnson? Quack? Yes, Michael. Best animated short? Ooh, so we're going for like either like the Oscars or the Emmys. Uh, oh, 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 then I'm going to say the Emmys. It is not the Emmys. Right. I'm sorry. Reese? The shorties? Um, I don't know, part of me wanted to say the Razzies, but I know that was more so for comedy, but it's not funny anymore. Mm. You are correct that it's not the Razzies. <clears throat> I feel I deserve a quarter point. <laughs> <laughs> we do two quarter points. I draw the line. And that laugh point. makes it a half That's point. It, not the Razzies, done. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a half point for suggesting quarter points. Um, and Michael, I'm going to give you a point because you actually said it. I did? Yeah. Shorties. Oh, it is the shorties. Oh, dang. It's the shorties. I didn't actually know that that was an award show. I just figured, hey, let's take a shot in the dark based on the topic, like Patrick said. There you go. That's what you got to do. That's how you do it. All right. Question number four. Shorty Want to Be a Thug was a song by this late rapper. Also, what real men buy socks in? (laughs) Oh. He's been dead for decades. I want, to pretend recently performed. I, have, I want to Tupac. pretend I have yes. one point in street. Tupac. It's Tupac. Reese got it with Tupac. Hey. <laughs> oh, a Tupac. You buy socks in a... Uh, okay. Should have... Yeah, real men buy All socks right. in Tupacs. The okay. fact that I get it, I didn't get it from Shorty Want to Be a Thug. I feel real bad about that. I should have known that. <laughs> you got the, the socks. You, you still got, you got there in the end, but... <laughs> hmm. All right. Question number five. Who almost always gets between second and third base? Quack. Oh. Michael. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Damn it. Ching. Oh, Reese. are we still doing hello, ladies? Because I'll just throw that on. <laughs> it, it's the shortstop. It's the shortstop. You got it. Okay. Question number six and go shorty. This comedic actor of SCTV and Captain Ron fame has been known to interview celebrities as Jiminy Glick. Yes, Michael. Martin Short. Martin Short is correct. Question number seven. According to Randy Newman, short people got no reason to Mm -hmm. blank. Mm -hmm. Yes, Reese. Rob a bank. (laughs) I mean, they could have a reason to rob a bank. Uh, I got no reason to... I'm going to say fret. Fret? That's a good guess, but it's actually live. Short Is it people actually? got no reason to I was going to say that as yeah. a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number eight. If you have this complex, I will banish you to the Quack. Isle of Elba. Yes, Michael. Napoleon. Napoleon. Very good. Question number nine. What 1986 cinematic robot was named after an electrical malfunction? Mm. Reese. Short. <laughs> that it, it's a two-word phrase and short is the first word short circuit you got it short circuit oh, there's a robot named short circuit i must have missed this movie this sounds from 1986 like something I'd be interested in. 
horrible, horrible uh, special effects. Because it was 1986. Well, then it sounds like I'd be interested in it even more. I love you, that. You should shit. check it. I think there was like three or four of them. There's a series? Oh, yeah, it is, it is a franchise. I've got some ground to cover. Short circuit? <laughs> Never would have expected that. Question number 10. What overly bepocketed item of clothing did I regularly wear Quack. in the early 2000s, much to the fashion world's chagrin? Yes, Michael. Coming in hot with the cargo shorts, baby. Oh, boy, did I ever. <laughs> I was very manly. All right. That was Go Shorty. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah. And at the end of Go Shorty, it's your birthday, heading into our final round, we have some interesting scores. Ooh. In second place with 27 points is Michael. And also, Reese, you are tied for first place. Oh, with, damn. With 27 points each. Look at that. Also, real quick, before we move on, can we give Patrick, like, a point for using the word chagrin? Because I haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> that counts as flattery, right? Give Patrick a point. <laughs> <laughs> I see what happened. All right. Yes, no, Reese, you man. get a point. Damn it. Boom! Oh, ahead. The Reese takes the lead heading into Damn it. round six. So this is going to be an audio round. I hope it works. <laughs> You're going to find out. That's a great lead in. Our final round of the evening is a round that we like to call Backtracks. So this is Name That's That nice Tune. That looks like <laughs> yeah. Patrick's back. That's, that's a self-portrait. <laughs> it's definitely giving me some uh, traction. <laughs> so the deal with this round is it's basically Name That Tune. So you're going to have to tell me the name of the song and the name of the artist. But all of the songs are going to be played backwards. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, oh, so we're going to hear some Satan. We're going to hear some satanic messages. <laughs> yes, You're going to play yes. some, uh, some Madonna and Led Zeppelin. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Our first track of backtracks. All right, Michael, what did you get? I put something by Cher. Something okay. by Cher? So Cher, you get a point. Groovy. Reese, what did you write down? If I could turn back time by Cher. You got it. If hey, I... this guy. If I could turn back time. If I could turn back Get it? Because the, the, the song's in reverse. Yeah. If I turned back get, time. Get it? That's really smart. You can't call yourself an atheist. If you believe in life after love. <laughs> All right. You just got yourself the second point. Ching, more share, baby. <laughs> okay. Song number two in Backtracks. Michael, what did you write down? A, I think it's an absolutely ripping lentil soup recipe, but I got <laughs> it's Get Back by the Beatles. You got it. Get Back. So two points for Michael there. I put the same thing, Get Back. By hey. Nice. All right. Uh, backtrack number three. Hey, you got the right I'm on. Looks like you guys have written something down. So, Michael, what did you write down? Backstreet's back, baby. <laughs> Everybody. Nice. And yeah. you also wrote down Backstreet Boys. So that is the band. Please. <laughs> I, I got Backstreet's back by the Backstreet Boys. Nice. You both get two Do points. I, get, I got boy. <laughs> That's a lot of boys. <laughs> oh, that many boys deserves a point. <laughs> All right. Backtrack number four. Here we go. Michael, what did you get? I got 
Back in Black by AC Lightning Bolt DC. That is absolutely correct. Lightning Bolt and all. And Reese, what did you write down? Back in Black by Akadaka. <laughs> <laughs> Two points for Reese. <laughs> you guys are tied still. Oh, look at that. All right. Backtrack number five. guesses i put sitar by ravi shankar <laughs> i like it i'll give you a point for that but it is incorrect reese what did you put down waterfalls by tlc oh it's not a bad oh. guess but it's not wrong i mean it, sorry it is wrong it is wrong. <laughs> it is wrong it is wrong the song is called back to life however do you want me by soul to soul oh back to life back to reality oh there goes back gravity. to reality <laughs> All right, track number six. All right, Michael, what did you get? I I put a regular Bob Dylan song. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a regular Bob Dylan song, but I'll definitely give you a point for that. Reese, what did you get? Um, definitely not Chuck Berry. It is definitely not Chuck Berry. Or anything from Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a half a point. But it was uh, Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. Oh. Track number seven. <laughs> I initially put backbird, but that's not, <laughs> that's not it. Okay, I, I let me cross that out before I get docked marks here. Okay, been down a one time. That's it. You got yeah. two times. Fleetwood that's Mac. Yep. Never going back again. That's you got it. it. Yeah, I definitely didn't have that. I put purple by Pold Clay. <laughs> oh, I like it. I'll give you half a point for that. <laughs> Backtrack number eight. Something by back. <laughs> it is something by back. Of the and Wolfgang Amadeus variety. No, that's Mozart. <laughs> that's Never mind. Mo Let's try it. <laughs> Johan Bach. <laughs> Bach. Yes, yeah, so you get a point for Bach. Reese, what did you have? Um, what is Back That Classical Ass Up by <laughs> <laughs> Point. That's my favorite. <laughs> it's actually air on the G string. <laughs> Backtracks number nine. Okay. I put the thing that Paw Patrol is not brave enough to call <laughs> Sky is back by Elton John. That is absolutely correct. Two points for you, Michael. Reese, how did we do? Yeah, hi, Alex. I'd like to say um, I want you back, but the Backyardigans rendition. 
<laughs> that is incorrect, but you still managed to get a point. I like it. All right. And our final backtrack and final question of the evening is this final backtrack. All righty. I feel like you guys both knew that right away. So, Michael, what did you write down? I got infant got lats. Sir <laughs> Mix a lot. That is 100% correct. Baby Got Back by Sir Mix a lot. And Reese, what did you write down? Yeah, I was going to say um, Baby Has a Voluptuous Rear End on Her um, <laughs> by Sir Mixes Plenty. <laughs> Very good. Reese gets two points. And that concludes Backtracks, our final round of the evening, which means the only thing left we have to do is check in with the scores and see who won. You both did amazing. It was a fantastic night. It's unfortunate that someone has to lose, but it means someone gets to win. In second place with 41 points was Reese, which means our winner is Michael with 43 points. Oh, that was a so two point close. lead. Congratulations. Like one song difference on the back track. Yeah, we almost Damn. had to go to the tiebreaker. You guys were absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much to Unkind Skies for being here today. Love your music, love your humor, love you doing trivia with me. So thank you again very much. And to all of you out there, thank you for watching. And I will see you some other time in my life. Good night. Good night.